What's up guys and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you how to get the Pyrolyzer in Fallout 76. Now the Pyrolyzer is a unique flamer that reduces the damage output of your target by 20% for three seconds and the reason why this is good is because of course you are using a flamer so the damage is constantly on the target which means as long as you're constantly hitting your target that legendary effect is always going to be active and the weapon is genuinely great like you can kill things very very quickly with this thing and the only real downside is the ammunition and but we'll get more into that at the end of the video and I also want to mention this as well, um, the version that I get in the video is a level 30, but I do believe that with these quest based item rewards, they scale with your level and I'll talk more about that again after I do show you guys the location. So to get this weapon, you'll first need to head over to a location known as Harper's Ferry. This can be found right here on your map. And the second that you enter this location, a miscellaneous quest should pop up, which says investigate Harper's Ferry. Now this part of the quest will lead you to a terminal in Harper's Ferry itself. It, you know, it is marker based, so you should have no trouble finding it. And when you enter that terminal and select the missing persons, then select the missing hunting party, you should now get a quest pop up known as tracking unknowns. Now once you have the quest, it will then tell you to investigate an area on the map. Uh, you can see exactly where that is here. And when you get to that location, you're looking for a Mr. Handy robot known as Hardball. Again, I'll show you guys the exact location of him uh, right now as it is one of those circle based quests where you have to kind of look around a little bit. Anyway, once you have found him and have spoken to him, he will then tell you to find a signal booster. Now there is two locations for this. Again, this is marker based, so you should be able to find these no problem. Uh, the one that we ended up going to was the one in the Valley Galleria. If you head over to that location on the map and then go inside of the main building, you can search the whole place out. That's what we ended up doing. But again, this whole quest is marker based, so you should have no problem finding any of the points in here. Um, but essentially, the signal booster will be inside of a metal container. Go ahead and pick that up and you are now on to the next part. So once you have that signal booster, it will then tell you to summon a cargo bot. And to do that, you'll need to head over to Camp Venture. Camp Venture can be found right here on the map as well. And once you're over there, you'll need to head over to the top portion of the camp. This is where the helipad is located. And if you go just down the stairs from the helipad, there will be a terminal that you can access and using this terminal you can basically summon the cargo bot and once you do this it will then tell you to wait and you'll have to wait around one minute to like two minutes or something like that and then when the cargo bot arrives you'll need to attach the signal booster to it now once you've attached the signal booster it will then tell you to track the distress beacon this is another one of those you know search the area type parts of a quest so if you head to exactly where I'm standing in the video, this is exactly the point you'll need to go to. And when you're here, you should find two bodies on the floor. Nari Samir will have the diachemical ID card and Nari's holotape on her. So go ahead and pick those up. And then next to the other body will be the distress beacon and also another holotape you can pick up known as Randy's holotape. Now, once you've picked up and listened to Randy's holotape, it will then tell you to go down into the diachemical sewers. But before you do that, there is an optional part of the quest, which is to go into Nari's bag and loot the hazmat suit in there. You 100% need a hazmat suit for this next part as the area is highly radiated. So keep that in mind. Put the hazmat suit before you go down into the sewers. And of course, the next part is to go down into the sewers themselves. So again, map location will be on screen. Um, once you're outside of Diachemical itself, there is basically a pipe system with a hatch on it. If you open up that hatch and walk inside, there will then be a door that will lead you down into the sewers. Now, once you're down in the sewers, there is a couple of enemies that you can clear out. They are high level enemies but they are weak enemies at the same time. So if you're, you know, if you're above level 20, you should have no problem really taking these guys out. And you just need to make your way through the sewers, you know, make your way through, loot up everywhere you can. And you'll eventually come across one of these rooms with a body in it. When you enter the room itself, the marker should pop up on the body that you need to go to. And all you need to do is loot the body and pick up Lucy's holotape. And from there, you are now done. The flamer will get added to your inventory 
and you now have the Pyrolyzer. Now the Pyrolyzer again is genuinely a really powerful weapon, however the ammo can be a little bit annoying to get a hold of, um, you can actually make the ammo, known as fuel of course, in the camp bench uh, for acid, oil and steel. You can see from the gameplay in the background this thing genuinely does a lot of damage. Um, the gameplay isn't showing off the weapon as much as I would like because again I was just simply running out of ammo very quickly but if you're someone who has a lot of acid steel and oil or you have a lot of fuel in general this is definitely a weapon I suggest you carry around. One thing to mention is I did actually see a video of an acid duplication glitch on YouTube it's kind of like bulking it and then scrapping it and then bulking it again and then scrapping it again for some reason it costs 10 acid to bulk and then when it's bulked, it actually has 15 acid inside of it. So when you scrap it, you get 15 acid back. You bulk it again for 10, you get 15 back and so on and so forth. If you do want to see the video that I did watch, I will leave it linked in the description below for you guys to check that out. Another thing that I do want to mention that I mentioned briefly at the beginning is I got this weapon at level 30. Now I did the quest at level 36. But I do believe that the weapons do kind of scale with your level. And the reason I say that is another similar quest based item like this known as the perfect storm a lot of people were getting that as a level 10 weapon but i did the quest at level 37 and i actually ended up getting the weapon at level 30 as well so that is something to bear in mind i'm pretty sure that it kind of scales upwards at least a little bit depending on the level that you are and you know if you're around level 20 to 25 that's the kind of area i would be in if i was going to attempt to do this quest you may get a level 20 version of the weapon as opposed to a level 30. So that is something to keep in mind when actually going for the weapon itself. Now, even if you don't like flamers and stuff like that, it's still one to add to your collection. You know, most people playing Fallout, they like to get all of those unique weapons in the game. I'm one of them. I like to collect them all. And this is one to add to that collection of yours. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the video. The next weapon guide that you guys should see on the channel hopefully tomorrow or the day afterwards should be a top 10 unique weapon guide make sure you are staying tuned for that and if you haven't subscribed yet definitely be sure to do so we're going to be covering a ton of stuff on this game leave a like if you enjoyed today's video it's always appreciated on the channel and i will catch you guys in the next video peace